Tennessee Majors making it clear Tennessee wanted him out. Majors announcing that his 16-year tenure as Vols head football coach will end December 31st. The news coming tonight from Memphis. I'm happy to say that my doctors say my health is now excellent. And contrary to some rumors, I was given the okay to return to work when I did. Okay, and uh, Tennessee, of course, will face Memphis State tomorrow. Now, UT assistant Philip Fulmer, the likely successor, though athletics director Doug Dickey indicated a nationwide search would begin. Sudden death time for high school football, the first round of the playoffs unfolding. And let's begin at Vanderbilt. Yeah. That's terrific. Days, the end of the Johnny Majors era at the University of Tennessee. That's right, Chris. And the announcement we've been waiting for finally came tonight in Memphis. Sports director Hope Hines was there when Majors addressed the media. He joins us now live from WREG in Memphis. And Hope, two nights ago, well, we lost we, we, hope. We lost hope. Well, we, while we're trying to get the satellite link up from Memphis, let me. I thought today's statement by Johnny Majors was typical Johnny Majors. He did not duck an issue. He hit it straight on. Did, did, did you notice that? Well, his motto is uh, aim straight for the bullseye, and that's exactly what he did. And uh, do we have hope now? Okay. okay. Now, hope two nights ago, Three you were the first right. reporter to say he was definitely out. So why did he choose tonight to announce it? To announce it and why in Memphis? <clears throat> well, it's been a very emotional day for one uh, John Majors, head coach of the University of Tennessee for the past 16 years. And a lot of things have been happening over the last two weeks, uh, both in the public and in the mainstream and behind the scenes, uh, working from the university standpoint and a groundswell of uh, fans across the state who have been unhappy with uh, Coach Majors. Uh, even, uh, even during those periods of time when things were going very well at the University of Tennessee, he never seemed to galvanize the state entirely the way some other coaches have in other parts of the country uh, as being head coaches at their alma mater, especially in their university. Of course, it was a very emotional day, as we say, for John. He came to the press conference tonight, and this is the scene a little bit earlier this evening here in Memphis. Uh, Coach Majors is going to make a statement. Johnny Majors entered the crowded press conference that he had requested, followed by his family and some close personal friends. He told the assembled media he would take no questions, then read from a prepared statement. Since I have not been given the opportunity by the University of Tennessee administration, to remain as head football coach past this current season. I am effective December 31st, 1992, relinquishing all my duties connected with the University of Tennessee. We will move to select a new head coach as this season ends and recruiting starts. There is no fixed time on that and we will make those decisions through the, with the conjunction with the administration of the university as we move to appropriate time. As to the specific reasons why Majors is being pushed out, UT President Dr. Joe Johnson said it was not his one loss record nor his health. You, you keep telling us everything that wasn't a consideration. What was a consideration? Uh, largely I think from my point of view it's, it's simply a matter of looking at relationships and uh, and uh, matter of relationships. It disappoints me and, and the whoever's at the, the state of Tennessee. Uh, uh, I thought it was a very class place while I was there, and uh, I think this deal is a little less than that, and that's just my opinion. Well, there you go. There's the opinion of one man, Larry Lacewell, who not only coached under John Majors as his defensive coordinator for many years, but is a very good, close, personal friend. Of course, he is now the college scouting coach uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. So he echoes the sentiments of those, Mark, that are on the side of John Majors. Of course, there's the divided uh, uh, state among those who uh, did not want John Majors to coach. And, of course, they have not talked about uh, Phil Fulmer. Nobody has said that, in fact, he will become the new head coach behind John Majors but we all pretty well know that he will, in fact, will become the head coach at the end of the year. Hope, what kind of an impact will this announcement have on the team during tomorrow's game against Memphis State? 
And when you're dealing with 17, 18, 19 year old uh, young men, uh, Mark, it's hard to say, but Coach Major certainly, as he indicated tonight and uh, during the press conference, he told the team uh, and the coaching staff beforehand to go out and play as hard as they possibly could. Play for the guy next to you. Play for yourself. Don't worry about me. Go out and have a good time and win the football game. We'll see. Okay, Hope, and we will talk to you later in this show, Chris. Well, it's no secret UT football is big in Middle Tennessee, and that was very evident tonight on talk radio. Phone lines to the sports talk shows were jammed with people calling in opinions and questions. And one of those fielding the calls was Doug Matthews, a former UT and Vandy assistant coach. Of course, I kind of knew it was coming, and, uh, uh, you know, I, in some ways it's very unfortunate. I think in ways sad, but uh, something that the people at the University of Tennessee decided had to, to be done. and. Uh, I guess their feeling is, let's, you know, get along on with the football situation. WWTN talk show host Teddy Bart said his program was also flooded with calls. Incredible, incredible response. Interesting phone calls. People are, it's, it almost reminds me of the President George Bush reaction. Uh, a decent man, uh, love him, he's done so much, but uh, it's time for him to go. Well, news of the end of Coach Major's era at UT played to mixed reviews from Big Orange fans, fans known for strong opinions, especially when it comes to their football. News Channel 5's Bud Hedinger found more than a few with something to say about Major's fate. UT fans haven't always agreed with Johnny Major's. Now they can't agree on what's happened to the coach. That was evident here at the Tennessee shop downtown. Johnny Major's is too conservative with the team. How about you? I think Majors is the best coach since he ever had. And they're blowing it. <laughs> You're going to have a fight over this? <laughs> Later. <laughs> the institution is ready for some new ideas. And it's time for Johnny to step over and give a younger man a chance. I don't think it's fair at all. No. Other fans we spoke with had strong feelings, too. I think it's Bush lead the way to be in hand. I, I really like Coach Majors. I think it's time for him to go, though. Fan. That's how Metro Judge Barbara Haynes feels. She's a rabid ball fan and longtime friend of the coach. But I don't question the right to change coaches. I question the timing and how it was done. No matter how you feel about majors, one thing is certain. Nashville will help write the final chapter of his storied career at UT. As majors coaches his last regular season game here at Vanderbilt's Dudley Field two weeks from tomorrow. Bud Hedinger, News Channel 5. The Majors era at UT actually began back in 1953. That's when a skinny 154-pounder became one of the key players in the old single wing. Majors soon gained fame and eventually finished second in the 1956 Heisman Trophy voting. He came home to coach UT in 1977. And look at the Pittsburgh sideline. Johnny had just coached Pittsburgh to the national championship. Expectations were high. The era began on a winning note, a victory over Boston College. In the next 15 years, Majors teams won more than 110 games. Some of the highlights, a 1982 victory over Alabama. It marked the first time in more than 10 years that UT had beaten the Crimson Tide. In 1985, Tennessee won the Southeastern Conference Championship for the first time in nearly two decades. The Volunteers capped off the season with a stunning 35-7 upset of number two ranked Miami in the Sugar Bowl. It's amazing, the most fantastic feat I've seen in any phase of football since I've been coaching. But several years later, the lowest point of the Majors era. UT started the 1988 season with six straight losses. Johnny's job was thought to be in jeopardy at that time. However, the Vols finished strong, winning their final five games that silenced a number of critics. But our team and our seniors are example of what life's about. There are peaks and valleys, and no football group of seniors can ever be personify the good things more than this team has done. In 1989, UT won a share of the SEC title and finished with a record of 11-1. 1990 produced another SEC crown and Major's 100th win at UT. Then in 1991, what many consider to be the greatest game in the history of Tennessee football, Notre Dame had jumped to a stunning 31-7 lead at halftime. Despite playing in lousy weather in South Bend, the Vols didn't give up. Instead, they clawed their way back 
eventually winning 35-34. Tennessee, 35. Notre Dame, 34. Majors won Coach of the Year honors twice and SEC Coach of the Year once. And coming up in tonight's show, reaction from the people Johnny Majors played with, those he recruited, and a look at the person who will probably replace him. And if there's an opportunity to coach elsewhere, I certainly would consider it. Reaction to the Majors announcement has been varied. Some love the man who won more than 60% of the games he coached at UT, and others just simply disliked him. News Channel 5's Craig Owens is at Vanderbilt Stadium, where Majors will coach his last game on November the 28th. Craig? Chris, we talked with some Vol fans at a high school playoff game here tonight. There was a degree of sadness, perhaps a degree of frustration among them. Even the ones who thought Coach Majors had to go don't necessarily like the way it was handled. He didn't deserve to lose his job, but it was time to make a change. Why do you say that? I mean, they were losing. They did a good job without him. It's time for him to go. Uh, I think it's one of those situations where uh, Coach Majors would never voluntarily leave the university under any circumstances. And no matter whether it was this, this week, next year, or five years from now, I think the same decision would have had been made the same way. I hate to see the, you know, it come at this time, but I think that... Uh, there needed to be a change to take Tennessee to a higher level. In a way, I feel sorry for him, but in a way, if we're going to have to change, right now is a good time for change. You think that situation was resolved the way it should have been? I wish it would have been handled more properly, but I don't know all the details. Oh, I hate to see him go. Was it time uh, for him to go? I wish they had waited to the end of the season. And Chris, we did talk with one possible UT recruit tonight, Jason Hill, a linebacker and offensive lineman at Brentwood Academy, says the coaching change does not bother him. He's still willing to go to UT if the chance arises. Thanks, Greg, for that live report. Mark? The change in coaching comes at a time when all colleges are busy recruiting top athletes. How will this impact the Vols? Well, joining us now to discuss that is Bill King, the sports director at WLAC Radio and an, and an expert on recruiting. And Bill, this is really a heavy season for recruiting. How will it affect the Vols? I don't think it can hurt the Vols. I don't know if because Majors is gone that they're going to have some great banner recruiting hall or something, but I think that it can't hurt them. 18, 19-year-old kids, 17-year-old kids really don't base their decisions on who was there or how perhaps a coach is perceived to have been treated by a university. I think it can't hurt them. Philip Fulmer, uh, the probable successor, has been a man on the recruiting trail the last few years, uh, very well acquainted with a lot of these kids. Uh, can he get the job done in the recruiting area? Oh, I think so. Phil Fulmer right now is the best recruiter on the staff. As a head coach, he'll be a much better recruiter as a head coach than Johnny Majors was. In Johnny Majors' latter years, he didn't recruit very well. He wasn't a hard recruiter, and he got criticized. I know many assistants that would tell me that and have told me that. He didn't get out. He didn't work hard. He's 57 years old. Phil Fulmer will be much better as a recruiter than Johnny Majors. Bill King, thank you very much. Chris? And when we return, Johnny's old roommate says, this is not the end. I just say that my doctors say my health is now excellent. And contrary to some rumors, I was given the okay to return to work when I did. This hasn't been easy to take for Johnny Major's close friends here in Nashville. As News Channel 5's Dan McDonald reports, the coach's college roommate says his old pal is healthy now, but wonders if he can recover from a broken heart. In 1956, Johnny Majors was running for glory at Tennessee. Nashville businessman Bob Gleaves blocked for him in those days. For three years, they shared a room. Gleaves and Majors are still tight, and he hates to see yeah, his buddy's yeah, reign end like this. Today, and I'm still in shock, um, and I'm saddened by it. I mean, I'm a total surprise. Back in 1946, Metro Councilman Tandy Wilson was a volunteer cheerleader. He's never stopped bleeding orange, and like any fan, he's second-guessed the coach. He's cursed the losses to Alabama, but he wishes Majors could stay with Tennessee in some capacity. He means so much to the university as a player and as a coach and as a friend, I would look for the university to find a spot for him. That probably won't happen. Majors wants to continue coaching somewhere.
Gleaves says coaching Tennessee is all majors ever wanted to do. He believes he'll bounce back, but it won't be easy. Because he loves Tennessee and he loves football, and it's his life. He'd never dreaded going into the office one day in his life. I mean, he just loves it that much. Dan McDonald, News Channel 5. Now, as we mentioned before, the talk shows have been a beehive of activity. And with us now is George Plaster from WTN. And George, you hear all the angry callers uh, calling for Major's ouster, but you said something very interesting today, and that is it's not what's been said by the fans, but some of the things that haven't been talked about behind the scenes that may have triggered this move. Yeah, I get the feeling that, uh, that part of what ended up happening in this whole deal, from the day that Joe Johnson told Johnny Majors, you can have your extension, but you're not getting any more money. You know, I can't give teachers money, so I can't give you any money. From what I hear, Johnny went ballistic, uh, if that's a word. Uh, you know, you could see the smoke coming out of his ears. I would love to have been a fly on the wall to see Johnny when he got that. But because from what we're hearing, when he found that out, he went nuts. And this was an unusual thing, because if you look at the black and white, the raw numbers, you'd think there wouldn't be a reason in the world to fire him, but this was more or less a star chamber decision made by the Board of Trustees. Yeah, those big five, as I would call them, uh, led by President Joe Johnson, they, they apparently in the last two weeks got themselves a consensus of that big five, as I call it, and when they did, they didn't take very long. And the moral of this story is, not only do you have to keep the fans happy, but the boosters and the trustees as well. Yeah, this is, and you know, this is, uh, I heard Doug Matthews say this, this is one of the top ten programs as far as media scrutiny. 96,000 people show up, and this makes us a really tough job. It really does. And perception sometimes, uh, really the most important thing. Yeah, the, uh, you know, how, uh, how Johnny has done over the last few years, people say, well, He's been to three New Year's Day games uh, in a row, I guess, something like that, but it really didn't matter today. All right, George, thanks a lot. Sure, Mark. Chris? Coming up next, a look at the man who may succeed his boss. The man expected to succeed Majors is offensive coordinator and assistant head football coach Phil Fulmer. News Channel 5's Brett Lee reminds us that Fulmer burst into the forefront of the coaching situation when Majors had heart surgery. Now on. Fulmer took over at the start of the season. His first game came on the road against a much improved team from Georgia, led by Heisman Trophy candidate Garrison Hurst. But the Volunteers responded, coming from behind to beat the Bulldogs 34-31. I think they grew up a bunch. You know? I grew up a gross. I, I, I hope it did. We, I, it doesn't get any easier, I'll say that. That was followed by a crushing 31-14 victory at home against Florida. The easy victory was unexpected, and Fulmer was on a roll. The Volunteers then took on an outmanned team from Cincinnati. Before another sellout crowd at Neyland Stadium, UT routed the Bearcats 40-0. I don't think that we played with quite the mental edge that we've had for the last uh, three weeks, and it's hard to maintain that kind of edge. But uh, we took care of business and did what we had to do and had a big win. The 42-year-old Fulmer is a graduate of UT who returned to coach at his alma mater in 1980. He served as a line coach during much of that time, but made his mark as the architect of the potent volunteer offense. Brett Lee, News Channel 5. Finally tonight, let's go back to Memphis, where sports director Hope Hines is covering this story. And Hope, I thought it was amusing that athletics director Doug Dickey said there would be a nationwide search, but make no mistake about it, Philip Fulmer is his man, right? Well, if I had to put money on it, Mark, I would uh, put my next week's paycheck on the fact that Phil Fulmer is going to be the next head football coach at the University of Tennessee. You see, here's what I do know about this whole situation. It is predicated not just on one thing. It is not just on Major's one loss record, because we all know he won over 60% of his games. It is not just predicated on the fact that he had uh, bypass heart surgery and that uh, his health may or may not be in the best shape it ever has been, but it is a combination of things, and it is the fact, make no mistake about this, that and I do know this for, for certain, that Clemson University offered just several days ago uh, to Phil Fulmer to become their head football coach. 
because Ken Hatfield is going to Baylor University. Now, I was told that by a very reliable source, so that pushed the timetable up for the University of Tennessee. They said, hey, we do not want to lose Phil Fulmer. We're going to have to make a move here. And so, as we heard Dr. Joe Johnson say earlier tonight in a press conference, it was really kind of a, uh, an impromptu situation, say this whole thing came down really in the last two weeks. So it's not just one thing. It is a number of things and uh, predicated on the fact that predominantly they don't want to lose Phil Fulmer. And in fact, I say, and most of the experts that I've talked to say, he ain't going nowhere. Hope you said something to me very interesting last week, and that is that Johnny Majors never achieved the popularity he should have. And if you look back through Tennessee football history, the great records of General Nealon and Bowden Wyatt, of whom uh, Majors played for, and do you think the bottom line was that Tennessee fans saw that Majors was never going to equal their records and they never really forgave him for that? I think there are two reasons for that, Mark. Number one is that John Majors came here from Pittsburgh, as everybody knows, just after he had won a national championship. And on the heels of that, Big Orange fans thought that he could parlay, parlay that into a Big Orange national championship as well. And in fact, he never did that. Now, on the other hand, John Majors, it oftentimes is a crusty, kind of uh, edgy kind of guy, as we all know was not what you'd call a real people person among all of the UT fans such as Phil Fulmer will be. So therefore, his popularity among fans all across the state was kind of up and down like a roller coaster depending upon what kind of day he was having. He was not that kind of even keel kind of guy that uh, they'd want to walk up to and hug and put their arms around every day. They measured Johnny Majors by wins and losses more so than, say, a Watson Brown who was at Vanderbilt, who everybody loved because of his personality. So Johnny had an uphill battle to fight uh, even though he was a favorite son and played there. It's kind of a sad situation and I personally think he was not treated in the best way that he possibly could have been. Okay, Hope. That's it, the end of the Johnny Majors era, Chris. <laughs> and Hope will be staying in Memphis to cover tomorrow's game between the Volunteers and the Tigers, so you join us tomorrow at 5.30 for highlights and the post-game reaction. For Mark Howard, I'm Chris Clark. Good night, everyone. <laughs>